Does activism influence your art or does your art influence your activism? I realise I'm probably more of an activist than a, an artist actually because unless I care about something I can't really excel at it. When you need to do a job, when it means something to you deeply and personally, you just do it so much better and it just has it's a different qualitative experience for the audience. That's why this kind of, I think, is particularly successful for me because I feel like there's activism, something I care about deeply and authentically. Do you think that activism and art should have a message? I don't think art has to have a message, honestly. Sometimes um, the message is beauty, the message is celebration. It, I mean, well, I guess that is a message, to celebrate. It doesn't have to be serving somebody's agenda. Um, happiness and beauty is its own agenda and that's okay. Should there be a minimum wage for actors on sets and on stage? I think there should be, not just a minimum wage, I think there should be a living wage. A living wage for people, as in I employ people, I never pay them the minimum wage. I remember doing that once in America because my, uh, uh, my accountant said that's, they set it up, that's what you pay. And when that person left for another job, I thought, this is a terrible idea, why? I don't blame that person for leaving. Minimum wage, especially in America, is not acceptable. They can't live on that. It's not respectful. And I actually do not mind having less so that I have loyal, committed, um, happy employees. What is the industry like for you, especially in the wake of the Weinstein discussions and what's been happening with that? Yeah. I just feel like, I feel like, well, I never met the man. I've not moved in those circles and now I'm just so super grateful. Um, what does it mean? I think it means a good clean out and long overdue, surely. I, um, I've never had that happen in a work environment myself. Pleasure Dome was a, a show, my husband Rob has been wanting to make, tell a story because when he was a young man, he got swept off on a night, the wildest night of his life, and he was a kid from the Midwest, and where there were drag queens and outrageous behavior, and he thought it was the most sort of scintillating, nutty experience, and he wanted to give that to the world, and this is where it has transpired, right here in Partick, um, off the Northwestern, in uh, Auckland, this show um, has, an act, has a component of activism, and this is not. This is a show. It's got two gay love stories running through it, romances running through it, and the audiences have been really positive about it. But it's not a show about gay people for gay people. It is a show for. It's for their parents. It's for people over. 40 or over 30 because they're under 30s. I've got to tell you whether you know it or not, they're not confused about gayness, straightness. It really doesn't have any heat for them. The whole question is like so old fashioned. They think we're silly. But people over 40 still need to be brought up to date. Well, this is what romance looks like. And in the gay world and it's not scary, it's beautiful. With all the things that you've done, being an artist and an activist, what do you want your legacy to be? Don't care. This legacy question, I think that's like a, a man thing. Men are always wanting to have sons and leave their name. I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'm doing this kind of for my own edification and then when I die, it over. <laughs> so what if I you better you? have had a good time, whether people <laughs> remember me or could not care less. All right, well that came from um, a really strong activist, feminist. Oh, that would be, you know what, that would be a worthwhile act. The activism, yeah, you want to have been part of some good change. Yeah. But show business, don't care. <laughs>